Hello everyone, today we are going to be going over the Blind75 in C++ and today we are working on the problem Spiral Matrix. Now, prior to breaking down the whole entire question, uh, we need to ask ourselves uh, our four questions. What the input is going to be, what data structure slash algorithm slash technique to use, what to do with the data, and then what our output is going to be. So, to go over the problem, a given an M times N matrix, return all the elements of the matrix in a spiral order. Okay, we can even look at the parameters at the same time to be able to know what we're inputting. We are given a matrix. And it looks like when we go over the example, we have a given matrix, but then it looks like, well, the matrix is indicated by the commas over here. Uh, the output is going to be indicated by this list we have. So it looks like we are going to be returning a list. And it looks like, for instance, if we have a matrix where the elements are in order per se, we are going to have an output. It looks like the elements are within a spiral order accordingly. Okay. And so the technique I'm going to introduce you folks to is going to be called the iterative approach, where we have four pointers. And we will uh, use them to print out each of the directions of the four pointers. So this may be a little bit confusing at first, but I'm going to be explaining more within the steps that we have. And so we will have, in order for us to be able to replicate this entire behavior of the iterative approach, what we need to do is that first we need to define our four pointers, top, bottom, left, and right. We will also initialize uh, list, which will be a vector, since naturally arrays um, and lists can be treated as vectors and such. And so the next step that we will do is that we are going to run a while loop from loop until the top of the matrix is less than or equal to the bottom and the left of the matrix is going to be less than or equal to the right. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to print uh, the top row from left to right and then increment the top pointer. Uh -huh. And then we will print the right column from top to bottom, decrementing the pointer, right pointer. And then we will be reaching to this point. If the top is less than or equal to the bottom, we're going to print the bottom row from right to left and then decrement the bottom pointer. And then if the left pointer is less than or equal to the right pointer, we're going to print the left column from bottom to top and increment the left pointer. And finally, we're going to be returning our list of elements. Technically, it's eight steps accordingly. So, to be able to break down everything that we are be we will be going over, we are going to be doing a step one. And two, where we will first, first top is going to be zero, and then int bottom is going to be equal to the matrix dot size for the very last element over here. Int left is going to be zero, int right is going to be equal to the matrix, the very rightmost element size, less one. Then we're going to have our list. We initialize, which will be a vector, and then we return the result. Then we're going to do step three, which we are going to be doing a while loop to expand upon our relationship. Top is going to be less than or equal to the bottom, and left is going to be less than or equal to the right. Accordingly, 
Then we're going to replicate our behavior for our four pointers with what we were doing through steps four through eight, or four through seven. So steps four through seven, we are expanding upon our four pointers and put them in our results list. So what we'll be doing, step four is going to be left to right. So four int is going to be starting at the left. And then i is going to be less than or equal to the right. I is going to be incremented, and then what we'll be doing is that result push back matrix at the top. I we're going to increment our top accordingly. And then step five, it's going to be top to bottom. So we'll do this part. It's going to be the same thing over here, where i is going to be the top, and it's going to be the bottom accordingly. And then we're going to do this on the right. Okay, and then we're going to do step six, where if the top is less than or equal to the bottom, what we're going to do next is then we're going to be int i is going to be the right, i is greater than or equal to the left, we're going to decrement i accordingly as the inverse relationship, and then we will matrix of the bottom of i, much like in the case of the top we have over here, and then we will be decrementing our bottom. Then we're going to do step seven, which is going to be the opposite relationship with this one over here. So it's going to be having the same if condition, except for it's going to be the left. It's going to be less than or equal to the right, and then we have i is going to be the bottom i is greater than or equal to the top, and then we're going to decrement accordingly and accept i is going to be the left side. So we expand upon set relationship as well and expand upon their inverse relationship. Okay, right here. Finally, we will be returning our result because we have visited all of our following matrices accordingly. This will be step eight. Let's just check to see if it runs accordingly. Wait, before, let's make sure that we have our syntax already set in place. Yep, okay. Looks good so far, but also for the correct if we ever need anything else. All right, it passes all the test cases, submitting this problem. All right, and it works pretty efficiently. Now let me just go back and be able to clean this up for you folks. On this corner, yep. Okay, and submit. Woohoo, we got this. So, to be able to expand upon the relationship of the space and time complexity, so. Our time complexity, given the fact that we are dealing with a matrix to even start with, and we are storing our following uh, matrix uh, within a list, the time complexity for the following is going to be constant, but instead it's relative to the rows and the columns, so therefore it's going to be O of M times N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. 
Um, that's because every element in the matrix is visited once, and the space complexity is also the same, O of M times N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns, because we are storing each of the elements of the matrix in a list to start with. So yeah, um, and the following solution is already further optimized uh, since each element in the matrix is visited exactly once. And yeah, this was a Spiral Matrix. Thanks again for taking time to watch this. If you found this helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.